Hello to the Honor Seminar students. I'm Dr. Darren Williams, Professor of Physical Chemistry here at Sam Houston State University. And I'm in the air probably between JFK Airport and Atlanta while you're hearing this message. I pre-recorded this video message to say hello to you on the first day of class. I'm actually coming back from a trip to Israel. And so I wanted to pre-record this message to let you know a little bit about what my portion of the course would be like this, uh, in this, um, in this honor seminar uh, series. And so here we are, this a seminar in humanities on science and religion. Uh, I'd like to give you an idea of what the goals and expectations are for my portion of the course. Of course, one of the great coaches for the New York Yankees, Yogi Berra, Yogi Berra, has got some great quotes, and this is one of my favorites. You've got to be very careful if you don't know where you're going, because you might not get there. And so we always need to begin with what our goals are, and these typically are written in educational speak. They're called learning objectives. And so our, we have three main learning objectives, and maybe Dr. Kaminska or Dr. Child have gone over these. But we want to understand the cultural and ideological diversity of contemporary religious and scientific environments. And we want to do this by studying the historical processes which has shaped them. And so I've highlighted certain words. We must realize that science and religion are both cultural endeavors. Uh, they're also ideological endeavors. We have certain foundational assumptions in both. Uh, the foundational assumption in, in religious circles is going to be the existence of God and the nature of God. Anytime we ask those questions, we're dealing with theology. And science is going to have certain precon preconditions or axioms that they begin with, like uh, measurements are repeatable, or that uh, the universe is an orderly uh, operating according to laws and, and things that we can determine via experiment. And so these are, uh, again, ideological foundations for both of those endeavors. There's also cultural uh, foundations, and we'll explore those throughout the course by looking at the historical uh, events and, and the changes in culture over time <clears throat> that have shaped both religion and science. One of the, my strong points in this course, or one of my emphases, is going to be developing a new tactics uh, for meaningfully engaging not just other people but also readings and videos and the goal is to be able to engage ideas that that you don't already hold and so we are going to be exploring our own ideas and then also learning how to engage others who have ideas that are different than ours and then through these tactics we'll develop skills in expressing and supporting our opinions in both written and in speech so these are some fantastic learning objectives. So in the end, uh, one of the things that you will come out of this course with is uh, a broader appreci appreciation on how to think, how to approach differing opinions in science and in religion, not what to think. Or we're not here to indoctrinate you into a particular belief system uh, for or against religion or for or against science, but we are trying to teach you how to think about these things and how to approach our disagreements in a, wis in a winsome way. And so let me go through the, the five weeks of lectures that I'll have, just giving you sort of the topic points on each of those lectures. We're going to start out with just this broad overview of science and religion, uh, really where science and religion started out as best friends forever, and now they're kind of frenemies. There's, there's some tension there. Uh, some are, are totally in the enemy camp between the two, and others are, are saying that there's, a, well, you would say a platonic relationship where they don't really get into each other's uh, magisteria, or um, the Venn diagram has two distinct circles of science and religion, and they don't overlap at all. So we'll ex discuss what caused the breakup of science and religion, and are they compatible today would be a good question for us to ask. I've shown a couple of sci scientists here. Uh, so starting out, the best friends forever type uh, um, cultural phenomenon was early on. Like as an example of that would be Blaise Pascal, who was a pioneer in computing, also a pioneer in physics, and also a Christian apologist. He wrote a book called Pascal's Pensées, or his thoughts about how science and, and faith, his Christian faith, really meshed well together. And so he's sort of that classical view of a, a Renaissance person who was both versed in physics, 
philosophy and also theology. You come to the modern day, uh, I picked Peter Atkins, not because he's the most well-known skeptical scientist, but in my field he's probably the most well-known. He's a physical chemist, and he has written most of the books that I've studied whenever I studied physical chemistry in undergraduate, and he also is the author of the textbook that I use today in teaching my physical chemistry course. And he's quoted here as saying, we need to encourage society to escape the grip of religion and superstition and allow the human spirit liberty. We need to encourage the full flowering of the enlightenment. And so we have to unpack these words and understand what he's saying. And also notice how some of his opinions are buried in this quote when he, when he relates religion and superstition and connects them in that way. That kind of betrays his ideas in terms of religion being superstition <clears throat> and that it restricts human liberty. So we'll discuss if they're compatible today and, and what caused these, uh, this division between science and religion. The tactics for difficult conversations piece is going to be fantastic. It's one of my favorite topics to discuss. How to listen and engage winsomely. Uh, I love this uh, idea that we have two ears and one mouth and we should use them in that proportion. I've given a couple of people here who are good examples of, of people who listen well who speak well, who can discuss difficult topics in a winsome manner without being disagreeable. And that is Greg Kokel, a Christian apologist, and Peter Bogosian, who self-styled atheist apologist. He wrote a book here shown uh, here called The Manual for Creating Atheists, where he actually gets into discussions with people asking how they know what they claim to know. And Greg Kokel's wrote, written this book, Tactics, A Game Plan for Sharing Your Christian Convictions. And so we're not necessarily going to learn how to share our Christian faith. What we are going to learn is how to ask good questions and how to share our ideas in a comfortable and an engaging way. What is, finally we get to, let's define our terms. What is religion? What is science? Uh, here we will use excerpts from Mortimer Adler's books, uh, he wrote a fantastic book that I encourage every one of you to buy. It's not required for the course, but it is a life-changing book called How to Read a Book. You know, we teach reading in elementary school, <clears throat> and it's more about the mechanics of reading. But there's so much more to learn about reading. And one way is how to digest a large amount of information in a small period of time. And this book will teach you how to do that. And then also, uh, Mortimer Adler, some have said, is the most educated man in the 20th century because he collected the great books of the Western world. It's kind of like an encyclopedia of thought. And so we will read excerpts from the great books of the Western world when it talks about religion and science and the historical developments of those ideas. And then we'll also discuss some of the definitions of science versus technology in how to read a book. And then we'll discuss some of the more contentious topics. I call this the elephant in the room. You may have heard that phrase. It's sort of uh, something that, that is on everybody's mind, but nobody's speaking about it. They call it the hidden elephant in the room. Well, um, you know, the, this current battle that's been going on for, I don't know, maybe close to 100 years, 140 years of uh, evolution versus Christianity or creationism. So let's talk about that. It's been 95 years since the Scopes Monkey Trial. How have the arguments on both sides changed? And so I think that's going to be a fascinating day full of lots of engagement and lots of uh, uh, interest because I know every one of you has been experiencing this in the public schools and private schools and this discussion between creation and evolution. And then we have to further develop our definitions of terms and apply them and this is a, a great question. How do we decide if a discipline is a science? Just looking at our own university, we have forensic science, we have social sciences, sociology, we have a department of political science, and we even have a, a department called family and consumer science. Well, what's going on with these and what kinds of definitions of science are these disciplines using? So I think that would be a, a great topic of discussion and maybe we can clarify some of our thinking about this. And then I'll finish up uh, my 
weeks of lectures with the big picture where I will compare six different worldviews. There are probably more, but this covers quite a wide range of beliefs and other worldviews can can fit in these columns. But we will start, say, on the left of materialism and then panpsychism, theistic evolution, intelligent design, old earth creationism, and young earth creationism. Uh, this is going to be a side-by-side -side comparison on how these different worldviews address things like the origins. And you, that's obvious here that you can see creationism and, and uh, materialism and evolution all addressing origins. But there are other parts of a worldview other than origins. There's also meaning. Is there meaning to life in all six of these or just in a few of them? How do we discover the meaning of our actions? Um, and our purpose in life, if there is a purpose. Morality, so all of these worldviews will have a, a certain take on, on moral laws and obligations, moral duties. And then the end of time, so the uh, origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. What's the destiny of us after death? What is the destiny of the world or the universe? You know, where is all of this leading, if anywhere? And so we will look at these six worldviews and analyze how they deal with those four main topics of origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. And so that's going to be a fantastic part of the course, I hope. I hope that you are excited about it after hearing this and that this will be an engaging time and that you will uh, come away with this learning a lot more about how to approach these topics and how to engage winsomely with your peers um, with your professors, uh, engage in writing, and, uh, and in speaking on these topics. So I look forward to meeting you next time. Have a great day.